Let's create a logo with the open source vector graphic editor Inkscape. You can get this terrific program from www.inkscape.org slash en if you're going for the English version of the program. Just look for the download button and there you can get versions for Linux, for Windows or uh, for Mac OS X as well. If you're going to install the Windows version, I would recommend the installer version. If you want to proceed without an installation, you can also settle on the portable version. By the way, under www.partha.com you will find a 64-bit version for Windows of the program. Just download and install the version of your choice. It's free. This is the logo when we are finished. The company is called We Care, a service to provide handicap helpers and um, also help for older persons. Let's get started then. On first run, Inkscape usually launches in a small window. Resize the window according to your needs. If you want to save the window's appearance once and for all, check the program's preferences under File Inkscape Preferences. Here you have to look for the section Windows and under this section you can check on Remember and Use Last Windows Geometry. First, let's check our document properties. You'll find uh, the properties of the current document under File, Document, Properties. I'm going to develop my logo in a standard A4 landscape format and I'm uh, changing the default units to millimeters here. Returning to the interface, I'm going to activate the grid, a very helpful asset while drawing and designing view and grid or as a shortcut the pound sign on your keyboard. Finally I'm activating Inkscape's color panel controlling the color of fill and strokes of the graphic objects under object fill and stroke. You can use the zoom tool to bring the artboard into view. Now all is set and we are good to go. I'm going to start with the logo type. The company's name is V Care, and in my sketches I decided to catch the V through a shape representing a person with outstretched arms surrounded by a caring dynamic circle, while Care itself is set in ordinary text. Here I settled on a specific typeface Calibri Bold in uppercase letters. Choose the text tool in Inkscape, click anywhere on your artboard and just type in uppercase letters CARE. You then can change the text appearance from the menu bar above. And here I'm looking for the specific typeface Calibri in a bold version and 144 in size to begin with. You can move the text around by choosing the selector tool here, clicking on the text and then you can just grab it and relocate it according to the grid. You can also up and down scale by grabbing one of the handles surrounding the text object. If you hold your control key down on your keyboard while scaling, you will keep the object's aspect ratio. This is a bit tricky while the grid is activated because you can only upscale and downscale by the grid. If you uh, would like to make this a bit more fluently, you have to deactivate the grid first. A typical design problem in logo design is to control the exact distance between all letters of a logo type, the so-called kerning. Logo design is a very, very precise craft. Look carefully at all letters and the distance between them. Computers aren't really that good to create a pleasant overall distribution of type. Uh, often you will need manual adjustment. In our case here, I'm going to correct the distance between A and C here just a bit. 
I think the, the computer generated automatic kerning is not satisfying here at all. Click into uh, the text object, double click, place the cursor now between C and A as I did here and if you hold down the ALT key on your keyboard and press uh, left uh, or right arrow at the same time you can adjust the kerning manually. I'm going to adjust the kerning manually by two steps here. I'm going to activate the grid again under view grid because now we are going to have a uh, complicated drawing job. We are um, creating the we formed shape using Inkscape's pen tool. The pen tool is able to draw straight lines and curves. In the beginning make sure that you have no fill activated so that you can concentrate on the strokes themselves. So you take the pen tool, click anywhere on your artboard and um, then click at another point. If you hold your mouse key down and move your mouse you can drag the so-called Bézier handles out um, and you will create a curve point. Then if you just move down you will be able to create a more or less straight line and upwards again dragging the handle out to form a smooth curve and proceed. And closing the form. You can at any point edit a uh, shape you created by its anchor point. If you choose the Edit Path by Nodes tool, then the anchor points you created are appearing and you can just grab them and relocate them after your own preferences. If you are done, you can always apply a full fill by if fill is activated just picking a color here down below from the color banner and um, the stroke I'm setting to zero. So this is the shape after I made all adjustments the final form. For the figures head I'm going to use one of Inkscape's geometric drawing tools the circle tool shortcut F5. Just grab the circle tool and open an elliptic shape until you reached the desired dimensions. You can also edit those objects by um, taking the selector tool. This would be um, the um, the scaling transformations. If you click once more in it, you will also be able to rotate it and then we can grab it and place it where we want. Now let's create this circular calligraphic-like form surrounding the figure. We are actually going to do this by separating two circles from each other. So a complicated path operation. I'm going to deselect the current active form and then I'm grabbing the circle tool again and then anywhere on my artboard I'm going to draw a perfect uh, black circle holding my control key down. Then on top of this circle I'm going to create another circle a um, bit less in size. This circle I'm going to set to white so that I actually can see the difference and then by selecting it I'm going to find a um, nice intersection here and I'm also going to rescale it until I have reached the desired dimensions. 
So probably like this, a dynamic shape created by two circles. What we are going to do now is to make a kind of compound path out of these two forms. The upper circle is still selected. Now with shift clicking, I'm selecting both forms and then I can from the path menu choose make a difference here and voila I have a nicely shaped calligraphic brush like form. I can now just um, grab the form and using the handles and the shift key I will be able to scale it into the right dimensions. Sorry, control key down, probably like this, and then I'm going to push it into place. Probably also the logo type, so that the A is continuing the line formed by the brush stroke here. And I can also upscale and relocate my other logo parts here, moving them around using the arrow keys on my keyboard. Finally, I'm going to add some more dynamic to my logo type just by uh, downscaling it a bit asymmetrically. In order to do so, I have to deactivate the grid so that this is more fluently. Probably like this. Finally, let's save our file from the file menu, save or control plus S. I would recommend that you save your file in SVG format. You can also save in Inkscape's native ink format, but in order to make your file compatible for other applications like for Blender, a subject of our add-on lesson creating a 3D logo, it's a better idea to save into the open SVG, the scalable vector graphics format. For the quality of your file, this would make no difference. Give uh, the file, of course, an appropriate file name. We care logo and save it. From the same dialog, you can also directly publish your file in PDF format. The file formats SVG, Scalable Vector Graphics, EPS, Encapsulated Postscripts and PDF are professional graphic exchange formats. If you deliver your file to a customer, you should always create versions in the named formats. In the last step, we need to convert our text. You can't rely on that your customer has the typeface you created your logo with available. If you save your file as PDF, in most cases the fonts necessary to display your logo are already embedded in the file. There can be exceptions though. You therefore should always convert all text included in your logo into vector graphic shapes. So that would make your file independent from fonts installed on any system. You need to select the text object and from Inkscape's path menu choose object to path. And then you can see that it's not text anymore. If you double click into it, it's a group actually, but if you double click into it, you can select the various parts. So everything is converted now. I'm going to save this again, control S and then we are done with the black and white version. Let's add some colors then. For this WeCare logo, I settled on the color scale gray, representing security, reliability, intelligence, maturity, on a beige pastel shade for the human factor, unification, pleasantness, and turquoise in a pastel shade as well for calm and sophistication. Applying those colors in Inkscape uh, can be difficult though due to Inkscape's known problems in handling CMYK colors, still an unfortunate flow of the program. A good idea is to start in RGB. All color information is actually stored in RGB values and then using the fill and stroke panel to grab CMYK values from there. 
Let's start with the circular shape surrounding our figure. Select it and then from the fill section here of the color panel choose RGB. I settled on the values 230 for the red channel then 144 for the green channel and the blue channel 85 and enter to confirm. The corresponding CMYK values you would get from here. Now I'm going to select both parts of the figure by shift clicking on the head and the figure itself. The RGB values are here 131 172, 189, enter to confirm. You can see that uh, the Wii shape form has still a stroke attached. I'm going to correct this right away. No stroke for my figure. Finally, I'm selecting the text. This is going to be a grayish fill, like 61. 69 and 64. Equal values are always generating gray in RGB and enter to confirm. Our finished logo in Inkscape. Let's have a look at how this is going to look like as a PDF file. File, save as, from the drop down menu choose Portable Document Format PDF and save your file. So, this would be the PDF version of our logo. Plain and simple. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Take care.